G'day, 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 you absolute bunch of bloody legends. A loser bum back on your screens with some low-quality, single-take, very lightly scripted retro computing content. And today is a short, much, much shorter follow-up to my long review of the Argon Lite um, 8-bit microcomputer. I've uh, been having some fun with it and wanted to share some updated insights. Um, a few things. Uh, let's actually jump over to the machine right there. A um, couple of things I'd complained last time that, you know, editing in the BBC Basic was a real pain in the ass because you had to retype every single sentence um, if you were on the actual machine. So it's not really good for developing locally. Uh, so there's a little trick if you want to make a change here. There, it's a MOS command. So you have to prefix it with a star and you do star edit and then the line number. I'm just going to use line number 10. And then you're popped in a little editor for just that line. So rather than having to retype and overwrite my entire line in which I want to edit, uh, I can do that that here, which I thought was kind of convenient. So well done. Uh, well done there. Um, back to uh, over here. In general, I'd mentioned BBC Basic. Yeah, I don't know why they put it on there. It was kind of cool. I played with it back in the 80s in, in school, so literally 40 years ago. But since, I have discovered a couple of cool things about the BBC Basic, which didn't quite blow, blow my mind, but they inflated it slightly. So um, number one is you can do inline assembler, right? So I don't really have a perfect example, but you open square bracket and then put a semicolon uh, and then you can actually put assembler code in your basic program and it will happily run it. I guess you have also access to the variable somehow. I haven't gone into a huge amount of detail um, but that's pretty cool. I remember back on Turbo C on, uh, on DOS that that was a great feature. Um, now this apparently has been around for a while because I saw some of the games which are available online use this. Now those BBC basic Basic games won't work with this because the assembler which you have in line here is going to be Z80 assembler, whereas the original BBC Micro would have been a 6502, so the assembler won't work. But still, that is, I don't remember that from 40 years ago. Uh, I'm sure we would have done some pretty crazy stuff. So, assembler in line, well done, you BBC Basic. The other thing which you can do on BBC Basic, which I completely missed, I don't know if they added it after my time, but it would have probably advanced my programming journey by, by five years, is you can actually extend the language. You can actually define functions and define procedures and basic and call them right so back here you define this proc and later you can like just count it the syntax is kind of funny because it's def space proc and then you have to like uh, it's not a space to define your function name it's actually glued onto the proc but you can pass parameters you can return values Wow, pretty powerful, because that would have been structured programming on BASIC. One of the big problems with BASIC, it was all go to and at best go sub and global variables like this. You can start structuring your, your programming. So again, um, well done, BBC BASIC. Very proud. Back to the editing uh, comment on BBC Basic. Uh, I did find this thing, link in the description uh, uh, below, BBC SDL, uh, Software Development something, library, whatever. Um, you can download, uh, I'll put the link in, in there, and that allows you to directly edit the BBC Basic files uh, on uh, your PC. And then you can save them as BBC files, copy them over to your SD card, and run them. So much, much nicer to, to edit. You can copy and paste. You can do all of uh, that good stuff. Your code won't run perfectly because the, you know, if you if I run here, um, this particular program, for example, oops, there it is, um, you know, it'll do some stuff and break because it's not, and the emulator is for an actual BBC micro. It's not for the Argon. So, but at least your, your logic, your programming logic, you can build out and do some prints. Um, yeah, that's that. I actually use this to uh, port a couple of games. Uh, allow me to... Uh, uh, to, to share that. So if you go to the mightyloserbum.com webpage and click on GitHub, uh, you will now find Oregon Trail for the Argon. I proudly ported that, which was really easy. I found a basic version of Oregon Trail for BBC Basic, imported it uh, in the descriptions here. I've noted exactly what I changed to actually make it run. Um, what did I do? Um, blah, 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 blah. I changed the mode, the graphics mode to line zero. Most of these games use a mode seven, which is 
is not yet supported by the Argon version of BBC Basic. And then there's this thing, Star FX15, which I see a lot in games. So it's a it's an operating system command which flushes the keyboard buffer. You can just delete it or, or comment it out. And that's it. And, uh, did those edits, saved the file, and we have Oregon Trail on the... Um, um, on the Argon Light, how cool is that, right? And uh, I also did another one, Argon Swap. That's a very simple swap game. I'll demo those. Uh, actually, I can do that right now. Let's go over to the machine itself and have a look. Um, there we are. So, uh, hang on, we're going to low. Oh, I can't remember. Hang on, uh, cat. Uh, where's the Oregon Trail? Uh, it's intro because it's a load. Intro.bbc and then run. And here we are. Uh, I don't need instructions. Uh, how good of a shot am I? This is the famous Oregon Trail. Uh, I want to spend 200 on my oxen team. I want to spend 120 on food, 10 on ammo, 50 on clothing, 50 on miscellaneous, and I have far too many dollars left. I should have bought more food i think oh yeah i should have bought a lot more food okay continue um and i want to eat moderately and i used some medicine and so on and i will keep um and so it's a reaction game when you do the hunting you have to type two and then type the letter very fast and depending on how fast you type you get the um you get the food. So we keep eating. And so, yep, that's that's your old Oregon Trail happening there. And then the puzzle game, the puzzle game, which is there called Swap. Uh, it's actually called Swap. So load swap.bbc. Run. It's a very simple game. It'll actually tell you how to play it every time. So you just type in how many numbers to swap from the left. So I have this row of numbers which i want to get in order and whatever number i type he's gonna he's gonna swap those numbers uh invert the order so if i do three um yep he's now swapped the first three numbers now i wanna do four now i wanna do yeah anyway that's that's how that works that was also same thing got it off uh, the internet from uh, uh from the bbc uh, so, so from an archive of uh, BBC, I put the link. There's a big ar archive of BBC games. Chain the same sort of thing with a video mode and this Star FX15, and off you go. So I might be porting a few games, but it's more of an experiment. And that was vastly aided by the fact that I was able to edit the BBC Basic directly in here rather than have to do it on the device. So well done, BBC Basic. The other thing, uh, so uh, which I've been doing some coding is uh, in is not Basic, but is C. Right? Right? I managed to get it all to compile from C. Um, again, if you go to GitHub and you go to Agon Projects, <clears throat> there's a project called um, Full Key Code. You have to download the whole folder and then run it in the ZDS, in the Zilog development system. Um, what I did, I used a, um, a template from a guy called N... Envenomator, right, who is uh, very active and has uh, uh, done some stuff around the Soko band for Agon and some Flash and is doing programs. So I took his one of his C programs, imported it and changed it to do a Starfield simulation. Now, the, um, the challenge with this is, <clears throat> I'm sorry, again, this development environment doesn't emulate the Argon hardware. The only way to do it is you compile your code. Uh, so I actually do it, you know, you build, rebuild, it's chunk all the code down here it's writing all the files then you go to this uh, debug subfolder in the debug subfolder it will have created a hex file which you have to run through a utility called hex to bin and then you save the bin file to your SD card and uh, run it from or load and run it from the operating system not for basic because it's a, a binary file an executable so my workflow is I compile and then uh, I unplug the SD card plug that into my little uh, into my laptop um, I've got a little batch file which pulls the hex file does the conversion and pushes the resulting bin file onto uh, the SD card so it's like one step I have to unplug the SD card put it back in the argon and ready to go so for every uh, iteration cycle you're shuffling the um, the SD card back and forth there's a uh, apparently a, an emulation cable or a cable which you can use which plugs the ZDS straight onto the board guess what it's out of stock it's unavailable uh, big they'll 
And the uh, latest thing I saw somewhere is that somebody's actually come away with doing that via a serial port, right? So I don't have a USB to serial adapter, but instead of shuttling over the SD card the whole time, you can actually do it via serial push. I might get into that one day. I got to tell you, I found the um, the SD card back and forth actually quite refreshing. It was had that vibe from, again, back 40 years ago, if you were like in a computer lab, oh, I've written my program and I'm not now going to put it into the main computer to process and then it's going to give me a printout of my errors and then I'm going to go back. So sneaker network debugging was an experience. Of course, it slows you down, but... Um, um, yeah, it's part of the experience. As I said, there, there's cables, there's things with the serial port, might ex uh, experiment with that. So with that, I'll just show you this, this code here. And while I'm here, um, in uh, this, uh, in my, um, what should I call it? Hang on, it would be here. Um, in my full key code project, I kind of cheated. I have three files called uh, main01, main02, main03. So those are my various experiments. This one fiddles with the keyboard the first two and the third one does a starfield simulation so if you want that code you just open that file copy the contents to main.c uh, build it uh, and run it um, because i'm having a really hard time making copy renamed copies of this full key code project and creating a crop project from uh, scratch in zds also isn't working for me so a bit of brute force there um, so the starfield simulation will show that uh, in the moment because there's some kind of cool stuff what i'm really proud of is um, the stars field simulation was based on that previous program from Envenomator um, and that was just to grab the key port code, right? You press the key and it showed you the hex key code, which is useful. Um, however, and is used this assembler file, MOS interface, to actually grab the key, right? This tiny little file. Now this, the version, the original MOS key code version would wait for a key press. But what I wanted was a main loop, which just ran all the way through, right? While running, draw the star field, do check for the key code, but if no key is pressed, don't wait. Just run through it again all the time. So that's what's happening here. This while loop is running all the way through. If there's a key, something happens. If there isn't, nothing happens. And to do that, I, I had to go into the MOS key code assembler code and comment out <clears throat> this line um, to simply not wait. So he's jumping back to wait key. Uh, I guess if there's no key. That's how I detect that. But hey, um, within a couple of weeks of buying this thing, I'm editing assembler Z80 assembler code, and it's actually working, which is like, yay, mind-blowing. Uh, so all the way, you know, I, I could describe the Argon. For me, the experience has been like, um, it's a neutronic rabbit. It's a rabbit, which is extremely strong, uh, weighs about a thousand kilograms. It's made of neutronium and just drags me down these rabbit holes of development here and BBC Basic and embedded assembler in the thing and procedures. And now I'm editing Z80 assembler in a C project. And it's actually working. So I'm thoroughly enjoying the experience. Wanted to share that. So uh, let's go over to El La Machina Infernale. There it is. And what I'm going to do now is hit reset because what I've done is in the autoexec.txt, I've actually got my Starfield simulation uh, loading automatically on boot, right? For debugging, that made it a lot faster because I didn't have to type load run any um, anytime. And here we are. I think it's 128 stars. We can look at the code in a moment. Um, it pushes the Z coordinate uh, closer by one step every iteration for every single star, and then it just just does a basic calculation. It's basic trigonometry um, to to display the star in 3D. And here's the speed, slight flickering because he does a clear screen on every cycle. But that's the speed. And because it's C, because I had no way of debugging without shuffling the um, <clears throat> this SD card back and forth, and also this is a binary. If my binary had a bug and crashed, it would just freeze. So then I have to take it back, put out the print statement, debugging and writing this was very long. But here's the fairly acceptable result. I mean, there's a, a lot of iterations going through here. So and it's still checking the um, uh, the keyboard every time, so I can elegant ex elegantly exit with the escape key, and I'm now back in the DOS. And now we will uh, load the BBC Basic. 
because, and I'll show you the code in a moment, and then we'll finish the video, methinks. Uh, no, not bin, uh, BBC bin. So here's the basic. Run it. And now uh, I reprogrammed. I'll show you the code. It's exactly the same code in BBC basic. Because I had the editor and because basic is so much easier to play with, it took me literally... 15 minutes at most to write the basic version of this um, as a benchmark, whereas the C version took me hours because of all that sneaker network debugging. But hey, as I said, that's part of the experience. So, uh, load starfield.bbc, and I've noticed the file names are not case sensitive. Run, and here it is, same program. Uh, in this case, I didn't do the deleting because otherwise it's really hard to see them moving, but you can see the massive difference in speed. It's exactly the same logic, mathematics, between an interpreted BBC basic and a C. I mean, I don't want to hazard a guess, but I'd say maybe a factor of at least 5 to 1, maybe as much as 10 to 1. Well, that's why people write in, in hardcore languages like C, because the result is is um, is better or is faster. So yeah, hey, we got start field simulations we got bbc we got the whole thing uh, let me just pop out there again and just show the original from c uh, in c just so you can see the difference that is actually quite impressive i'm i am quite chuffed with that all right with this we then uh, go back to over here and just show you a few things uh the c code there's some leftovers because i, I was playing with various libraries but i've got three arrays of 128 uh, that's the number of uh, of stars um for the x y and z, z dimension um here's simply an initialization where it's using a a randomizer function and uh, the coordinates are based around the origin so they're plus minus uh, x y the, the, the x y coordinates are plus minus so I populate my 128 uh, elements with some coordinates then while true I run through I grab a keyboard code just in case for every um, uh, star then I uh, push it uh, closer by doing z equals minus one if z is equal to zero it gets pushed to the back and it gets new new coordinates, so a new randomizer. Then uh, it goes through all of the stars again, um, does a little calculation here. So this x divided by distance, well, that's what gives us that 3D effect. If the uh, star is falling off the screen, so 320 is half of 640, so that's my maximum screen resolution, same thing. Thing gets sent to back. Um, I'm sure that if I didn't use randomizers here, it might be a little bit faster. And then I, at the end, I actually plot um, the thing and that's it and then I'm just checking on the keys to um, uh, for the escape uh, and so yeah that's that's some pretty clunky code there including assembler if I then look at it, what it was in basic same thing right uh, build my arrow initialize the field over here uh, right with just random it's almost it's very very similar I was able to copy some of this almost one-to-one -one from C, change a few brackets, and here's then the main loop from 200. Move the stars closer by minus one, check if they're falling off the screen, uh, plot them somewhere, there, plot them, and uh, then go to, you know, that's uh, how you do it, go to 200. I don't have the escape one on here because basic escapes anyway on escape. So, uh, with all of that, um, yeah, that's been a little bit of fun, but we'll be publishing this again. I'm no expert, I'm just having some fun and enjoying it um yeah uh, remember to go to loserbum.com for your github and discord and merchandising needs remember i make zero profit on the merchandise and i've never sold anything it's just part of the fun um with that um i just want to say thanks for watching keep fiddling with your argon i hope this is of help i'll be uh, sharing the files or the files are available on github the next step or logically for me is to see can i actually program this thing in assembler right building an array it's just pointers to add array, uh, arrays of uh, to array of uh, of integers and iterate over them with a bit of minus i think the hard part is going to be the division um so yeah i don't think i'm going to be writing a fully functional z80 assembler program that quickly because it's going to take me a while to get there but i think uh, yeah it's it's going to be fun and at some point i'll i'll get there and share and it'll be interesting to compare then the speed between interpreted bbc basic compiled c and the compiler can't be that efficient because the file is massive and actually rock hard z80 assembler as i said this is the neutronic rabbit of the argon light 
Uh, what do I send? You're all a bunch of bloody legends. I'm loser bum. You're the inter. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I forgot my catchphrase. My catchphrase is: If you like this content, please uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Please remember to tell your friends uh, to like, share, and subscribe. You're all a bunch of bloody legends. I'm loser bum. You're the internet, and I am out of here.